from all around your lawn. Good morning and welcome again to the GDML Footy Show coming to you live out of Geelong on a beautiful Saturday morning. It's been rather cold this week, very, very cold indeed, but it's uh, not too bad a day for footy this afternoon and big round of footy coming up this afternoon. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the show. Last weekend we saw some big games. Inverley Hawks, much too good for the Belmont Lions. Matty Carr kicking seven goals for the Hawks, a great effort indeed. Bell Post still going along their merry way at the moment. Much too good for East Geelong Eagles. Werribee Centrals, the boys in the Duck Pond, too good for Cryo. David Leach getting six goals there for the Centurions, a great effort indeed there. The North Geelong Magpies went out to Church Street and Paul Briggy back in the goal kicking a game. But the Magpies, much too good for the Geelong West Cheaters on this occasion. The Tommy Tigers, well, not only did they beat the Winchelsea Blues, but Lucas Forbes kicked an amazing 14 goals for the Thompson Tigers. That's a great effort at any competition that takes his tally to the season to 95. And I tell you what, big chance he'll probably kick that again, get his 100 goals this weekend, this afternoon. And the 94.7 match of the day was the Bannockburn Tigers were much too good for the Anarchy Roos with Matt Tyquin once again in the goal kicking there for the Bannockburn Tigers. Hello, I'm Dick Philpott. And once again, I've assembled one of the biggest names and brains <laughs> in local football. We've got rid of the walking flea. He's, uh, he's not in this morning. We don't know where he's got lost in a bit of shag pole carpet somewhere along the line. But he is the number one commentator in country football. And I speak, of course, to a very good friend, Eric Nichols. Good morning, Eric. Good morning, Dick. Nice to be back again. It is nice to be back again, mate. You took off from the show last weekend and then you disappeared out to the Geelong Footy Club. Yes, yeah, so yeah, went down to School Stadium instead of out to Anarchy and... Uh... I suppose enjoyed uh, a very good Geelong game, but I, they tell me I missed a very good Bannockburn team. And they tell me you told a young bloke that watches our show every morning that uh, he should uh, get out to Thompson and watch Lucas Forbes kick his 20 and missed out on watching the Mighty Cats play. Absolutely, yes. So yes. they listen to what you say, Eric, don't they? Well, it's nice to, nice to see some people listen and do take some notice. Sensational, mate. Well, fantastic. Well, last weekend, of course, the 94.7 match of the day with the Bannockburn Tigers, much too good for Anarchy. Grubby Coach has caught up with Ross Dillon, the coach of the Bannockburn Tigers. One of the co-coaches from Bannockburn, Ross Dillon, in after an absolute drubbing of Anarchy today. But before we talk about the game, Ross, you didn't play today. Uh, injured or how long will you be, mate? Uh, yeah, I injured grubby. I did my hamstring two weeks against Cryo, so um, I think this will be the last one I miss. Probably play next week, so and then oh. hopefully the rest of the year. Well, that's good because we, we did see you against East Geelong when you probably won the game from be, by beating Lucas Murphy. We were really wondering who would look after the big fellas at Anarchy today, and we thought it would be a worry, but by gee, that wasn't a worry in the finish. You, you just annihilated them. Yeah, we went really well. Um, Ross Dando played a fantastic game. He played on Jamie Pittman here last year and played really well on him as well. And so he couldn't see why any, there was going to be any difference today. And he did a fantastic job, kept him goalless. So uh, Greg played a great game at centre back, and Jackson O'Neill, who's just coming back from a few injuries as well, kind of. Uh, beat Stevie Reichert early, which was good, and forced him to go in other positions. Yeah, well, you're dead set right there. I thought your defence was fantastic today. And, look, as I say, at the start of the game, we probably had a problem in the ruck too. We thought that Big Wilson would be far too good. But I tell you what, that's a great... Uh, the best game I've seen from Hagger Bowles, and he ought to take a bow. Yeah, Haggis has been great. Like we commented on the bench, we just can't believe how what he's done for us this year. Like he's been playing seconds the last two years, and we didn't think he was going to play ruck this year. And he was the only big bloke that wanted to have a crack at. So he, and he just gets better and better. He, oh, he's got a massive heart. Why doesn't he just keeps going? So it just wears him down in the end. Now I know you and Ronnie have got a hell of a lot of faith in your players, but tell the truth, mate. Did you really expect to come here and win 19, 18 to 7, 10 today? There's no way I expected to win by that much, Grubby. We thought um, she was going to be a big four-quarter game where hopefully we'd kick away in the end. But to win like that, it was uh, very pleasing. And just to see the guys, I think it's the first time we've done it in a year, all year, that we've actually played proper team footy the whole day, which was very pleasing. Now, as good as you were, I think Anarchy were ordinary today. We have to say that. They did put in a shocker. Now, if the results go the way, you may well play them again in the elimination final in St Albans. So that, that would probably go well for you if you've got this confidence after today's win. Yeah, well, it's one all now, so I'll take the confidence from the game, but really I don't think the confidence ends after about five minutes after the first bounce, so I don't think you'd worry them too much or us too much. You're just still going to have to play footy again if we have to face them again. And welcome back. And, yes, of course, next week we'll be back again with another interview from the match of the day, which will be this afternoon's big game. It will be an absolute beauty. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But um, we'll have a look at the ladder now and just see where everything's standing at the moment. And here we have the Bell Post Hill Panthers, Still on top there, doing it very, very nicely indeed, followed by the Thompson Tigers. 
Bannock, Bernice, Geelong and Werribee Central is making up the five as it stands at the moment. Werribee Central is only two points ahead of the North Geelong Magpies, who have a great percentage. So it only needs Werribee Central to falter and the Magpies walk straight into the final five. But they must beat the side that's just behind them at the moment. Anarchy, big game out at the Keith Barclay Oval this afternoon, North Geelong and Anarchy. Followed by Inverlee, Geelong West Cricket and Footy Club, Scorio, Belmont Lions and the Winchelsea Blues. Still haven't opened their account in 2012 and uh, I reckon it might be uh, that might be the case as we go towards the end of the season. Well, we've got a very special guest in the studio this morning. Uh, our footy could not happen without these blokes. And, of course, I speak of the umpires. And we've got the football director here this morning, Scotty McLeod from the Geelong Football Umpires League. G'day, Scott. Morning. Thanks for having me on the show again. I oh, could have you back again, mate. Now, I've got one quick question to ask you. Um, Brendan Beveridge and Murray Fanning still running around doing umpiring duties in the GFL. That's got to be... A, as you said, great servants they are, but it's disappointing that you haven't got the numbers of young people to come through and do those tasks. Yeah, exactly. Oh, they're great stalwarts of the yeah. of the of the umpires. Um, have been for many years, done many many games, and 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 done it very successfully. And and, and you're right um, that they know their roles now changing. They know that they are, are there to mentor the young kids and the individuals mm. and bring them through. Uh, unfortunately, we, we're lacking in, in that sort of group, that cohort of, um, say, 25 to 35-year-old age bracket. Mm. And, and Murray and uh, Brennan, they would, they would pl uh, gladly step aside to, to let these younger guys come through and, uh, and serve as the they step aside? Football. You reckon they might be dragged off screaming? Well, I, I don't know. Probably, so probably kicking and screaming, yeah. They're out there because they love the game of footy <laughs> yeah, of and, and, uh, and, and they're not going to step aside uh, unless they're um, incapable of doing their, their role uh, appropriately. And at this point, they're, they're certainly uh, doing mm. a good job still. Scotty, we've got three rounds to go to finals, uh, the other two leagues maybe four. A lot of interest and a lot of people say to me, how do the umpires make an assessment in that time relative to who's going to umpire finals? Now, I know it's not over three weeks, but uh, tell us mm. how, they, how you go about it. Oh, names don't get pulled out of hats uh, or anything <laughs> like that. We don't uh, come up with those funny games. But uh, it, there's high stakes for the umpires, as much as there's high stakes for the uh, playing groups and the teams at the moment for their finals positions, um, there's high stakes with, with our group and, and they're all there fighting for their finals positions and fighting for their grand finals. We, we go a vigorous, undergo a vigorous um, assessment of umpires throughout the year and, and even more so at this time of year when we need to, uh, under the pressure of big games, they need to step up to the mark. Uh, we, we score them, we rank them uh, against each other and uh, the numbers purely dictate where they finish up with their finals at the end of the year. Uh, the highest uh, average scorer gets the best grand final all the way through to our bottom scorer gets whatever games are available to them. So it's certainly highly competitive amongst our group and that's the way it should be. The strong probability from that statement is that very few of the umpires we would normally have through the year will get final? That's right. Um, that's right. We have, we have uh, our top end of umpires um, umpire longer throughout the year. Therefore, they go right up to grand final day. Um, and there's, there's some umpires will drop down through the the, gra um, the grades to um, to the GDFL and even below that into the under 18s and, and so on competitions, um, purely because the as the games filter, we filter our umpires and, and get the stronger ones in to the, the games at the end of the year. Scotty, we had you on at the start of the year. We did a big campaign to try to push some of the people to come in and take part in umpiring. Mm -hmm. You're always looking for kids to come out there. I know it's late in the season now. Yep. How do the numbers go from from that initial show early in the year? And you're still looking to get some big uh, recruiting drive going, get a few more back in? Yeah, I've certainly got plenty of ideas. And yep. look, we, we've, we've exhausted a number of areas. Uh, it's not just been the, the, the situation presenting ourselves this year. It's been over a number of years. So we've, we've exhausted a la large number yep. of avenues. And we'll continue to do so. I've got some ideas that, that we can put forward. There's been okay. some media uh, this year about umpiring, especially of late, uh, in the various competitions along Ge yep. throughout Geelong. And those, uh, those, uh, there's a lot of sympathy out there for what we do and how we go about it. So hopefully there's some good momentum that we'll bring into next year and get some more numbers on board. Well, hopefully everything will go well for you guys, mate, because we do need you out there on the paddock. We can't do much without you. We'd be belting yeah. each other up if we, had, we did it ourselves. But uh, good luck for the finals coming up for okay. both uh, whatever finals you partake in, yep. whether it be football, Geelong, Ballerine or the GDFL. And uh, I'll get Fano to put a bit of a banner on the screen as to uh, where you can contact you to find yep. out if I can get some kids out there to do some umpiring as well. That'd be great. Right. Certainly exciting time of year, so uh, we're excited yep. to be part of it too. Thanks very much for coming in, Scott. Scott yeah, McLeod, welcome. the Director of Umpiring, Geelong Footy League, Umpires League, our special guest this morning. We're going to take a break and pay some bills and come back after this break. from all around you long. I'm going to tell you how football is strong. Welcome back, and of course everything that is Colts footy is Mitch Clear, and here's Mitch.
Thanks, Dick. Well, another massive round of Colts action awaits us this morning, kicking off in just over an hour's time. First up this morning, we're going to take a look at Division 1 game between Lara and Torquay. Lara caused one of the upsets of the season last week, beating St Joseph's, and we'll be hoping to do the same travelling to Torquay this morning. Personally, I hope the Cats can get the job done again with Torquay behind My St Mary's and Colac sitting in third. Lara's Todd Smith sits in first place on the league goalkeeping table with 31 majors, so the Torquay boys will have to watch him closely. Other games in Division 1 this morning, I travel to St Joseph's, hoping to get redemption for earlier in the season. Colac host Newtown and Chuol. Grovedale travel to, travel to Drysdale. And South Bowen host Ocean Grove, looking to keep their finals hopes alive. Uh, moving across to Division 2, and our footage shows Werribee Central's big six-point win over Bell, Pass last, Bell Park last week. Grubby and the boys from the Duck Pond will be stoked with those efforts. This morning, we'll, we'll look at St Albans playing... Bannockburn, both teams trying to avoid the dreaded wooden spoon. The, Sorp, the Super Saints won the last encounter between these two at Bannockburn and we'll be hoping the home ground advantage at St Albans Reserve does the advantage for it this morning. Other games see Bowen Heads host Leopold. Geelong West look to keep its finals hopes alive against Bell Park. Werribee Central's travel to John West St Peter's West Oval. In Division 3, we're going to take a look at St Mary's second side playing Monawari in a marquee fixture tomorrow at quarter to 12. The Warriors got the chocolates earlier in the year by 10 points, so our boys will be hoping to get one back this morning. And in Division 4, there's an all-GDFL bout in Division 4 this morning, with third place East Geelong playing Anarchy in third. A massive game for both sides, with East Geelong looking to threaten for top two, and Anarchy looking to keep its final chances alive. One man the Roos will have to keep an eye on this morning is East Geelong power forward Jordan Anson Gorman, who leads the competition with 28 goals. That's all from me, Dick. I'll see you next week. Thanks, Mitch. And, of course, Mitch Cleary will be back again next Saturday morning to talk everything that is Colts footy in Geelong. We've got another very special guest on the show this morning. Yeah, they're coming from everywhere, folks. There's no doubt about that. And, of course, this man is the president of the Thompson Tigers Footy Club. You know, I call them the Violet Crumbles, but I'm not going to say anything about that. But then again, his jacket might just give that away. He is Glenn Watson, and he is the president of the Tommy Tigers. Good morning, Glenn. Thanks, Dick. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, good to have you on the show, mate. And uh, everything's going all right up there at the moment, very nicely with your full forward or your, or your forward player, Lucas Forbes, having a bag full of goals every week. And could be a very, very exciting afternoon this afternoon. I think so, yeah. Luke's um, obviously going pretty well. Um, he was aiming for 100, I think, last week. The coach yep. said he was going to drag him at 99, <laughs> so we could uh, get him to kick the 100 at, at East Geelong. Yeah, but, we all uh, like to do that, don't yeah, we? Home ground, yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he's going really, really well. We're pretty happy with it. Well, we're happy with the whole side of the way they're going, but uh, Luke, is, uh, he's just made it along nicely at the moment. So. Tell us a bit about yourself. Um, you're one of the newer presidents out at uh, the Tommy Tigers. There's been a, a great list of them out there, of course, over the years. And yep. I go back to when I was president at North Geelong, the fun I used to have with Eddie Dare. A bit of camaraderie we used to go on backwards and forwards yeah. then, I can tell you. But uh, what's your background with Thompson, uh, I, I first came over there in 1989 when Phil Serra was coaching the um, Super Rules. Oh, yeah. And uh, Eddie Dare was president then, and he was... His largest life, as you said then. Sure was. Uh, in between that, I uh, didn't have a lot to do with football. Um, motor racing is really my main passion. But uh, Craigie Jacker, who's the past president at Thompson, is a good friend of mine. He was uh, president for six years. And he asked me to come over and cook some hamburgers for the yeah. under-18s. Uh, here <laughs> we I, go. Which come I and help us out. Yeah. The rest is history. So I went from uh, <laughs> 18s to uh, behind the bar with Bluey to on the committee to vice president to... Yeah, I think it's a pretty normal story as how you sort of get a leg up there. And, uh, sure is. Uh, you know, there's 30 or 40 hours of your week gone once you get to sort of the president. But yep. uh, I'm pretty lucky. Uh, my boss, Brendan Clark, he's on the committee and uh, he gives me a bit of latitude so I can spend a time doing some stuff Good for the club, which is great. Yeah. Glenn, you've, you've put together a pretty competent football department. Uh, Christian Hyland doing a great job as coach. And I notice a lot of old faces in, in support staff with him. And, and that's great to see around a footy club. Yeah, look, um, Christian, uh, uh, he sort of, um, well, I guess Greg McLeod convinced him to come and coach. Uh, I think, you know, he's, he's got his own business. Uh, he's, you know, he spends a lot of time with that. He's got a young family. He wants to spend time with that. But uh, he agreed to come on board, and he's just done a fantastic job. Yeah, he's a, he, he's a, I reckon he's a fantastic coach and a fantastic person to go with it. He's just, you know, he's, his whole outlook on what he does and why he does it is just, you know, it's first class. Um, same with the players, you know, his expectation of the players is, is very high and the whole thing's lifted with him 
and he's called on, you know, the Meharis boys have come to help. Um, Dinger Dell from back in the in the 70s and 80s has come over as a runner. So, you know, and, and we're getting a good good group of the old players come back as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's happy days at the moment. So. Yeah, and of course, a little bit of uh, sentiment this afternoon, of course. Uh, not that it's paid for the Polly Rankin Shield. That's a once a year thing that you do. But obviously, there'll be a tinge of sadness about the two clubs today in memory of uh, Polly. And I think you might have said on the break that um, black armbands will probably be worn by the players. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, Polly was a, yeah, a fantastic bloke. Yep. Uh, I knew him probably more socially than I did football-wise, but, um, yeah, everybody spoke about him as as the man who he yep. was, you know, and he was bigger than most in most, sure most issues, yeah, so, yeah. Glenn, thanks very much for coming on the show this morning. I know it's only short and sweet. That's the way we do it here, no, unfortunately. But uh, <laughs> all the very best to Tommy Tykes for the rest of the season, and I say that very sincerely, folks, I really do. <laughs> and uh, but good luck, mate. And I know the finals will be a great enjoyment for you. And uh, hope Lucas Forbes gets his 100 goals. Five to go. He's great for footy. And uh, the Tommy Tigers are great for footy as well, mate. So well done. And we'll see you again through the finals. Thanks, Nick. Thanks for having me on. Good on you, mate. Glenn Watson, the president of the Tommy Tigers Footy Club. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, Eric and I will analyse all the big games on this afternoon. Back after this. The from all around you long. I'm going to tell you how football is strong. And welcome back. And of course, a big round of footy on this afternoon. And nothing bigger than that at the Thompson Thunderdome. It's the Tommy Tigers taking on East Geelong. And the big sort of thing about the Tommy Tigers is everyone's wondering whether Lucas Forbes will kick five goals this afternoon and get his 100 for the season. I think everyone in footy would love to see that because he's been fantastic to watch this year and going along very, very nicely indeed. Eric, um, a big game for Thompson, but probably more a bigger game for East Geelong to sort of start to get some form if they want to play some good finals footy. Yeah, they've had a bad run, Dick, in the yep. last couple of weeks and uh, they've been playing some top sides. <clears throat> they need to win today to have a chance of uh, finishing top three. But the interest, as you've mentioned in the intro there, Luke Forbes, if he can get his five, I think Christian Hyland would be very, very happy if it happened in the first quarter because it's over and done. Yep. The interest then becomes in Thompson beating uh, East Geelong in the game. but. Don't forget we've got the other best full forward in the competition, Lucas Murphy, playing at the other end of the ground. So it'll be a Sorry. great contest with uh, mm. two full forwards. We saw them earlier in the year at Richmond Crescent and uh, Thompson were just working into some very good form at that time. And on a very windy day, they won that game particularly well. I think the game might be a lot closer today. East Geelong, as you mentioned, everything to play for. I think Thompson can win and uh, they probably need to get the momentum going now. With three weeks to finals, they need to continue winning. Yeah, interesting game indeed. And of course, as we said before, we've been watching the president of the Tommy Tigers. A tinge of sadness. And it's the first time these two clubs have played each other since uh, they lost Polly Rankin, who was a great follower and supporter of both of the clubs and a lot to do with them completely. And it is the local derby, Derby, whichever school you went to. And uh, it'll be a fantastic game indeed. So if you can't get out there this afternoon, folks, you can tune in to 94.7 The Pulse, your home of country football. Well, you'll hear Eric, he's back again from other duties down at the Geelong Footy Club. And I guess he will have his uh, cohorts beside him in uh, uh, Jason Doherty and Grubby Cations, who is at the moment, well, we think we lost him in a shag pole carpet somewhere, but he will come back by this afternoon, we hope. Out of the Inverley Oval, it's the Inverley Hawks, and they take on Belfast Hill. And Inverley, well, their season's been up and down, and uh, I guess for Dale Smythe, disappointing year in some respects. However, in other respects, he would have seen something he can build on for next year, but they're taking on Belpost Hill, and I guess Inverley, Eric, will put it down as a loss, but it'd be a measuring stick to see where they're at, how close they get to the Panthers. Well, right at this moment, Dick, I, Dale wouldn't have given the game away. No. It would be an enormous feather in his cap <laughs> yep. to knock over the top side, and uh, oh, yeah. they, on, on in their best game at home, Inverley uh, would be a chance to win, but I tell you what, this Belpost Hill side... I saw them two weeks ago. They're very, very good. They're playing a great brand of footy and they've been working towards this right through. I, w I would think Brett Grigich probably hasn't got them at their top, mm. but they're not too far from it. And unfortunately for Inverley, I think they're going to be too strong, uh, even though the game's in Inverley. But look out, Inverley will give it all they've got. Matty Carr gets in on song again and kicks another seven goals. He could make things interesting as well. Well, the only thing, Matty's a good full forward, yep. uh, with all due respect, probably against the lesser sides. He, and, and against the good sides, he's got good defences. He cops the best defender, and uh, I tell you what, he earns he's, his goals there. He'll earn his goal. Well, you heard it, Matty, so you'll have to get out this afternoon and show Eric you can kick a bag full against the Panthers, and that'll be fantastic here. Yeah, we can't see the Panthers losing that one out at Inverley. 
out at the winter resort, the Belmont Lions, well, they're having their big pass players day. Is that right, Mr. Floor Manager? Pass players day and a big barbecue sizzle and uh, the electronic scoreboard will be in full flight. Cogsy will be in full flight. It'll be a massive day. And he has assured me, Eric, that there is no doubt the Belmont Lions are going to thump Cry this afternoon. What do you say about that? Well, I don't know about thumping, but I give them a <laughs> real chance to win at home. They're, they're a different side when they're playing out at Winter Reserve. And uh, they'll certainly uh, take it right up to the Corio side in this game. Corio, I've got to say, probably have been uh, very disappointing for the year. They've been a bit disjointed and, and they've copped some decent old floggings in recent weeks. Belmont Lions haven't been that bad. Early in the season they had a terrible draw. They copped all the top sides in the early games. And uh, as we spoke to the coach a few weeks ago, they're looking to run the season right out. Look, I give them a real chance to win today. Well, there you go. We'll see what happens there then, Eric. And, of course, up at the Duck Pond, up at Grubby's little home ground up there, the Werribee Central's footy club, they can't afford to drop a game at all. They're two points clear of North Geelong, sitting fifth and sixth, respectively. And they take on the Cheetahs. And it's at the Duck Pond, Eric. Um, I can't see the Cheetahs winning up there, but, gee, from a North Geelong supporter's point of view, I hope they do. <laughs> yeah, I, I reckon that was coming, Dick. I could see that. And uh, for Werribee's sake... They certainly will win this afternoon and they'll look forward to next week's game, mm. which is probably their elimination final next week. But uh, let's look at today first. I think they'll win comprehensively. Percentage is not going to be a concern for them and uh, they just need to get their team structures together today, start playing well as a team and uh, develop a good enough uh, performance to win a game next week. Yeah, we'll see how we go. Eh? go all I can say is go Cheetahs. I tell you what, there could be a couple of boxes of Crown Lager in the boot for you if you can get over the Centurions this afternoon. It'll be fantastic. Speaking of games that have to be won, that's out of the Keith Barclay Oval and the North Geelong Magpies. Well, their season is in the holding pattern at the moment. They must win every game right through to the end of the season and they take on their old nemesis, the Anarchy Roos. Big uh, rivalry between these two clubs. Massive games in the 90s with a couple of exciting grand finals. Well, we all know what it is, Eric. It's probably another another name for an elimination final because whoever loses this, they can kiss goodnight to 2012. Absolutely right, Dick. And not only uh, do North Geelong have to win every game to play in the finals, so do Anarchy. So yep. that it is a, an elimination final. Whichever side loses a day has no chance. The other side has some chance. But yep. the, uh, the interest will certainly be in this particular game. They're both two points out of their top five and the, the winner continues, the loser doesn't. I think at home, North might have the momentum. So when West Belt Werribee this afternoon, one of these sides, <laughs> North Geelong will go straight into the final pod. Wishful thinking by the big fella, folks. We can only wish. Out of the gun club, and it won't be called that much longer because the name has changed. I believe it might have even changed last week. It's all gone. The Winchelsea Blues, they take on the Bannockburn Tigers. and. One thing, Bannockburn won't drop this one and that'll keep their uh, final five hopes absolutely intact there. Winchell see well, a couple more games to go by the end of the season. Eric, can you see them winning a game? No, unfortunately no. I can't, Dick, and it's a sad uh, state of affairs, but uh, they've been the chopping block all the year. They need to develop over the uh, off-season and uh, be competitive again next year. Bannockburn not only playing in top five, Dick, they're looking at a top three spot. Mm. They win and win mm. well today. And the, their future in the top three is in their own hands in the next two weeks. Well, it'll be very interesting indeed. Well, Eric, it's been great having you on the show with me this morning, mate. We proved we can run it without the little bloke. We well, could be besides him, <laughs> we just can't see. But I've got a million gags for him next week too, folks. Don't you worry about that. I know you've got a couple of friends behind you, Eric. Just put the camera back on Eric there. Where are you, Mr. Eric? There, look at that. We've got oh, very popular. Donna and Fiona from the netball show <laughs> just hanging around. They wouldn't leave the studio. They wanted to get behind Eric and give him a bit of an encouragement. Be fantastic indeed. Well, don't forget this afternoon the match of the day out at the Thompson Thunder Dome. The Tommy Tigers take on East Geelong at 94.7, the pulse your home of country football. Everyone have a great afternoon in footy. Go those magpies. Make sure they don't stuff this one up this afternoon. And go cheaters. That's all I can say again. Have a great afternoon in footy. See you all again next Saturday morning. Bye for now. <laughs>